Joining us now is City U.S. Equity Strategist Scott Cronert. Scott, great to have you on. Your thoughts about the market at this level right now? So, so we recently raised our target from a longstanding 4,000 up to 4,600. The view was at that point that um, we had to price in or acknowledge the soft landing possibility increasing. At the same time, we were busy raising earnings estimates for the balance of this year for the S&P and now to the, the, the balance of 24 as well. So from our perspective, you know, we've been in the mode for the past month or so of looking for a pullback to be more aggressive in. We're kind of lay, laying out 42, 4,300 as a range where we get more constructive on, the, uh, on, on a new entry point for the S&P. Okay. We're still above that. 4,371, it looks like here. We finished uh, the day just under a point higher for the S&P. What, what do you get constructive on uh, when we start hitting those levels? The, the market more broadly or are there specific sectors? So the way it's going to play out, we've been saying for a while now, um, we're, we're very comfortable with the growth side of the ledger longer term. We do think there's a new driver in town via AI, but we're, uh, we're looking for pullbacks to buy into. So we've been saying, look for pullbacks on growth, put new money to work on cyclicals. That's more or less played out as, you, as this soft landing uh, discussion has taken hold here. As we pull back, I think we're going to be much more balanced in how we see the opportunity setting up. You know, the framework here very simply is, um, fundamentals are getting better in our view. You round trip the move off of the late May rally in the S&P, which was a combination of growth and AI promise, along with an economic sensitive push on soft landing. And your risk reward just sets up, uh, in, our, in our view, much more constructively for uh, the broader market in general. Yeah, just uh, digging through your notes here uh, on sectors. Looks like you're steering clear of financials, but that you do like real estate. Why? So real estate, you know, our view all year has been that the negative impact of rising rates got, got priced in last year. We, we, we know that we're dealing with a, um, a, a, an issue within the broader real estate market, particular to the office sector. But when you look at the composition of the real estate uh, or the REITs within the S&P 500, you get a much higher quality component there. You get the companies that are either data center plays, they play to the, uh, the tower um, component of REITs. Um, and uh, what I'm going to say, you know, the industrial component as well. So when we look at S&P 500 REITs, we think the setup fundamentally is pretty constructive here. And again, we think at, at the margin, we end up benefiting as we get to a, a, a peaking Fed over the next several months. I and mean, we've seen the 10-year yield shoot higher this week. If we not only retest the October highs, but we push through them, say, does that change the thesis at all? So when, when we said, look at, you know, we're raising our target, prepare for a pullback, I got asked the question, OK, so what's going to trigger a pullback? And front and center was, heck, uh, the market had gotten comfortable with a 35 to 4% 10-year for the better part of this year as the NASDAQ was rallying. And so our perspective was very simply, you take some of the attention away from AI, you put it on a different angle, and in this case, you, uh, you look at rising interest rates through a 4% nominal on the 10-year, and you begin to reinsert this valuation issue. So four and a quarter, maybe we go into four and a half. Yeah. We, we think that um, that is what actually helps trigger a valuation compression off the move we've had. House view here is that we still end the year with 10 years in the closer to 365 range.